everyone, so I have a special guest for you guys in this video. I'm about to head out and meet Tracy Brown, the dietitian that changed my life, that taught me all about intuitive eating herself, and I don't know, just the lady who led me to finding freedom again, who taught me how to not always have to focus on what I was eating, who taught me how to not count the calories that I was eating. Um, just live a more happier and free life. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's head out and let's go meet up with Tracy. So, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and sure. then we can kind of just get to it? Sounds good. Hi everybody, my name is Tracy Brown. I'm a somatic nutrition therapist and registered dietitian. Um, I'm recovered by myself from disordered eating back, gosh, 15, 20 years ago, and, you know, I recognize that um, people don't really need to know more about nutrition to have a healthy relationship with food. What we really need is to learn how to trust our bodies again, and whether you're an athlete or, um, you know, somebody just, con not concerned, but um, has interest in general health, it's one of those things that sometimes knowing more isn't what helps us actually be healthier. And so that's the premise of intuitive eating is learning how to trust our body signals and using something I call a little bit of gentle nutrition to maybe help guide some choices you make, but also um, using your body as the main source of um, feedback as to like how you're eating and if, that, if that's working for you or not. So. so I used to see a ton of different dietitians before meeting Tracy and every single one would not preach this, they would <laughs> preach everything and anything, but it was always very frustrating for me because I, they would just talk about the food pyramid and how you should eat this, not this, and how to gain weight, like you just need to eat. And I just couldn't get that and I didn't, I, I didn't feel like I trusted any of them enough to listen to their advice, I guess you could say. And so when Tracy, I met Tracy in Gainesville when I was in college and was introduced to this thing called intuitive eating. And so let's just talk about number one, what is intuitive what, okay. eating? And gotcha. Intuitive eating is actually a really natural process that we're all born with. We're all born with the ability to know when we're hungry and stuff when we're full, but along the way, external influences have gotten away, gotten away with that. And one of them can be maybe well-intentioned, but um, a little bit um, misinformed, like you and health experts or our family, or certainly, you know, media and the dieting industry has taught us that like we can't trust our bodies and that there's a right way to eat. Yeah. But I look at it as like, well, there are how many billions of people on the planet? So there have to be billions of different right ways to eat. Mm -hmm. And so intuitive eating is really coming back home to yourself, meaning you're the only one that knows when you're hungry and knows what is enough and nobody else can know that. So, um, in one hand, it can be a very radically freeing approach, but I also know it's scary because we do live in a very fat phobic, thin obsessed yes. Um, yes. <laughs> world. So it makes us feel like that if we don't have a certain kind of body that we can't trust, how it is that we need to be. Yeah. And then, okay, so that's what intuitive eating is. For me, um, I, like you said, like I, I didn't feel like I could trust my body and I didn't when you start talking about this whole thing like intuitive eating like for me after suffering from an eating disorder i when i did try to gain weight it was always just more of um binging on food just to kind of get the weight on me because mm -hmm. that's the only way i didn't know how to just eat normal like right thinking back to when i was a kid or even just years before this eating disorder came I could just eat and right. not think twice about it and I would just stop naturally when right. I wasn't hungry anymore right. and st and like eat when I was hungry and I just like couldn't grasp that idea anymore and I right. couldn't I didn't feel like I could trust my body anymore so kind of just talk about for people like that were in my shoes right. and don't know how to start this whole intuitive right. eating thing. Great. Like how can, where can they start if they don't feel like they can trust themselves, if they've been starving their bodies, if they've been binge eating? Right. No, it's really, I'm glad you mentioned that because it is hard to jump right into intuitive eating when you've been so disconnected from your signals and trust in yourself for so long. Um, you know, most of my clients that I work with at the beginning, whether there's binge eating um, or restricting, or maybe again, you're somebody who's just kind of really 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 into fitness but it's kind of gotten a little bit far over to where 
you get even you feel guilty a lot for what you eat if it's not on the plan or the right rules is that um, sometimes it's important to have a little bit of structure but not in a good food bad food kind of way it's more about structure in providing for yourself meaning regular meals and snacks is just like a really great place to start and um, making sure you're eating enough a lot of times people will like they think they're eating enough but usually yeah. they're, you know, they're not they're so disconnected that they don't recognize that they're actually maybe only eating 50% of their calorie intake by 6 p.m. You're right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like they think they're binging all night long when really they're deprivation driven eating. Yeah. So what regular meals and snacks can do for people, like literally having a, okay, I'm eating by a certain time after I get up. And it sounds a little bit like, well, isn't this just another diet? But really you're learning how to provide for yourself versus, um, you know, deprive yourself. Yeah. And even if you're struggling with binge eating, um, there's some level of, um, the intuitive eating actually provides a structure within itself, meaning you do have signals of when to stop. So when you honor that, you're going to be not eating too much, if that makes sense. No, yes. And I like how you said, like, you don't know, like, until you start kind of being, becoming more aware of what you eat, you don't realize how little you're eating. Because right. for me, I thought I was overeating like I thought I was eating enough yeah. and then Tracy had me keep food journals and I would look back embarrassed and sometimes even <laughs> add little things to it like because I was like I can't show her this like this is like under a thousand calories and like I would like add things here and right, there and like, right. and like she would have me jot down like my feelings and I started realizing how nervous just being around food in general and how like just like bad I would feel after anything I ate and everything and so yeah. so I'm glad you mentioned that it's really normal it's like when you start refeeding and re-eating again that you're gonna start running into first what seems like all the food rules that you may have had over a span of years and it's really important to do some challenging those food rules well who says that's too much and where did we get that and challenging like well inherently like there's no good or bad food I mean my body might react in certain ways to certain foods but inherently eating a cookie is it going to make me gain weight the next day, even if, you know, regardless of what that means about you, yeah. if you had a cookie or not, but like from a metabolic perspective, that's not going to make you gain weight, but the belief that makes you gain mm -hmm. weight is going to make somebody feel really bad in a fat phobic culture. So it's challenging, like, okay, well, is that really your body or is that your mind? Yeah. No, and I remember you specifically telling me I was jotting down, like telling, like recalling like what I'd eaten in a day or something like that. And I had said something along the lines of, oh, I was at my sorority house and I was gonna make a sandwich, but they didn't have whole wheat bread and like I didn't wanna use the white bread. And instantly you were like, well, what's wrong with white bread? Like what's, what, what is so bad about white bread? And I remember not really having a reason to back it up <laughs> and being like, well, it just, it just, it just is. Like, it's just not good. Right. And like, right. I didn't know and so, that is a key in the very beginning to mm -hmm. be just challenging all those beliefs that you've had for so long in your mind. I know that was one of mine, like just like the fact of carbs being bad in my mind. Like I would just like binge on like protein things and vegetables. Right. And so I know that is a great tip when you're first starting intuitive eating. I think that, to, I think if to sum that up, that would mean one of the tips with getting started with, per, with eating is full permission to eat. Yes. A full yeah. permission is like, it doesn't mean that you're going to feel 100% okay, but you actually need real proof yeah. of what your brain's saying. Yes. Because a lot of times we think that I eat this white bread, oh my gosh, I'm going to like, something bad's going to happen to me, aka gain weight. Yeah. When really, it's another way to kind of also avoid what it is you're feeling. Because yeah. if you get really involved with all those food rules, you're not really connected to like, oh, I had something that was like not whole grain yesterday and I wasn't yeah. freaking out. Today I am freaking out. Is this really about the white bread? Yeah. Because you can eat you know, half of your grain intake and, and not whole grains and still get your fiber requirements met and all those nutrition things met. So yeah, it's not always about like eating the right food or not. Yeah. And I know like when you do start not listening to your body and like what you're really wanting and you start trying to just say, oh, like I can't, I, maybe I am craving white bread or I'm craving a cookie, but I can't have that because it's bad. So I'm just going to fill up on vegetables. But that's where like, for me at least, binge eating came mm -hmm. into play because mm -hmm. And I never really gained weight because I was always binging on healthy foods, but I was it was just making me feel terrible about myself because I would 
want something but not let myself have it. And so instead of eating, say, a small bowl of ice cream, I would just eat tons and tons of vegetables to the point where I would go to bed feeling sick at night. And I'd wake up the next morning and be like, oh, I ate so much, I'm just going to starve myself for the rest of the day. And then the next night it would happen all over right. again. It just this So it's a good, good illustration of actually in that moment the vegetables were the least healthy thing you could have done. Yes. The most physically and emotionally. Vegetables being unhealthy. Right, yes. hear that, exactly. <laughs> that there are, there are contexts where that doesn't work. You, I do have people that binge on broccoli or apples thinking, well, it's okay because, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's healthy, a.k.a. in our culture, low calorie yeah yeah so we've attached so much like healthy equaling weighing less that we're actually missing out on so much of what actual true health is which is yeah. like this combination of mental physical emotional and even spiritual health mm -hmm. that like it doesn't feel very mentally emotionally spiritually healthy to you binging on broccoli one or apples yeah. one your stomach's gonna kill you mm -hmm. that night and feel terrible so not so healthy and yes. secondly just the emotional toll that takes on somebody mm -hmm. to like feel like you can't have what you want or you don't deserve to have what you want as yeah. well as just physically feeling bad. So, so you know, like I said, we've talked about permission to eat and we've talked about um, eating enough as a first two steps to intuitive eating. I know a hang up that a lot of people have in getting started is they're worried about their weight. And so it's totally true. Yeah, it's a huge fear and that's one of the reasons why people move forward. Sometimes it feels like slowly in this process because um, I think we you know, get so attached to like, if I gain weight, something bad's gonna, it's gonna happen to me, or I'm gonna be not seen as like, successful enough, or have enough willpower, and the truth is that like, we don't have that much control over what our yeah. natural weights need to be. And um, I remember you saying that to me, because I would talk about like, fears and stuff, and you would say like, well, what, what would be the worst that would happen, that you gain weight? Isn't that number one, what you're here cut for, kind of? And I was like, well, yeah, but I don't know, there's just like, this fear inside of me, yeah. and so, and it's just crazy how like you do really need someone that is kind of just real with you and kind of just there for accountability because as soon as I started listening to her and like challenging my fears, I started gaining weight that was healthy and yes like so for intuitive eating like it helped me gain weight but that's in the place like I needed to be it can right. help in both ways it can mm -hmm. it can be for someone to lose weight it, it, it gets you back to your natural state I yeah say. that's per that's a perfect way to describe it is that intuitive eating is very weight neutral meaning if you are above your natural weight which we all have a range where our body wants to be if you're above that people do slowly lose weight it's not a weight loss tool and I know a lot of people do try I have clients that come in like kind of like one foot in both camps they want to lose weight but they want to be free so I know they still struggle with like cutting corners That's a little bit bad diets come in well they yeah just ruin that metabolism and just make you feel terrible because you're right. like a failure right so it's like I do understand the desire to, to want to lose weight in this culture if who wants to be part of a stigmatized group if you're if you're happen to have a larger natural set point um, so I totally get that and that's part of the process of making some peace with that but um, intuitive eating is very weight neutral so if you're about where you need to be you'll stay around that even if you're eating a normal amount of calories 2,000 calories or more a day if you're eating that you're not necessarily gonna go up if you're below your natural weight like you were yeah. yes you gain weight but it wasn't because you push yourself so hard to get there your body yeah. naturally went to where it needed to go and so I know for those of you who may be struggling with not okay with your body you know, intuitive eating is a process that you can't really screw up. It's just more about learning and recognizing that, like, you're going to have the closer you are to a more natural weight, you're going to have more freedom and less food obsession and less a need to count and and worry and even use exercise, something that could be healthy, as a way to compensate for your quote unquote badness of not having yeah. the right weight or eating the wrong food. Um, so, like I said, I do understand that, like, that fear about that. Uh, but there's some level of, like, I guess I tell people, can you be flexible enough and be okay enough of where your body is right now to like have one step closer towards freedom? And I know that's like a day to day decision for most people. It really is. And I just have to say from like a personal standpoint that that freedom is so liberating. Like it's so refreshing to finally feel again. It's like the freedom that I used to have before all this came up into my life where you know, if I want ice cream, I can have it. And like, I can stop myself at a decent portion because I know that it's there tomorrow and I know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I can have it again tomorrow if I really want it. So yeah. I can 
stopped yeah. instead of like just sitting there eating the whole carton of it because right. I'm like, oh, it's I can't ever have this have again. again so. Right, and that's the permission to eat. I will say, you know, coming from both of our perspectives, I mean, we probably have a little bit of privilege in this process because our natural weights both ended up being something that culturally is still deemed quote unquote acceptable. So I do. It doesn't make the process any easier for anybody. It's just that I know that if you happen to have a um, a higher set point, it's still a little bit, it's a little extra yeah. scary to be able to like hear all this um, from people who, okay, we're recovered and intuitive eaters, yeah. and we still kind of maintain some level, we did maintain some level of like cultural cultural acceptability. So all of you all listening out there to see us and think, well, that's great for you all because you're both still small, yeah. is that like, um, you know, we hear you about that and it's still, you'll still gain the same freedom. It's just that I think that you'll learn to start caring less about what everybody else thinks within their own prejudice about and that. And that is like, that right there is healthy, guys. Like healthy is not a specific weight. Like healthy is being happy like with your body and like what the perfect version of you is. Like not trying to compare yourself to me or to her or to anyone else out there. Like, like I love social media and what it can do to motivate and inspire, but it can also do the exact opposite and make this whole comparison game where you're feeling terrible, uh, terrible about yourself all the time because you're comparing yourself. Right. And so, like, intuitive eating is great for just finally getting back to that happy place and being confident in who you are and just being happy with who you are right. and what, like, what your natural body is and that is beautiful in itself. Like Absolutely. you don't need to be a perfect weight. You don't need to have perfect hair, perfect skin. Right. And like that's what I stand for in so many of my videos as you've seen guys, but right. it's just being happy with who you are. Well, it's, I guess uh, just to repeat that in a little bit different words, it's about coming home to yourself is that you are going to exude what it is that, um, what really is going to attract people to you. It's not going to be about like if, um, you know, you've got abs or you don't or um, anything else that's like socially deemed as acceptable or even like anything that goes wrong around the fitness world that's really important to recognize like fitness is not a look fitness is like what you're able to do with this awesome body you have whether you're a size 20 or you're a size 2 um, all bodies are awesome and all bodies have potential to be fit so you know that's what just part of this freedom is about as well so well, I think like that kind of wraps up just everything so. that we can provide with intuitive eating and I actually just wrote a blog post for you guys too on just summing this all up and just leading you to books that I have found helpful and um, a book on intuitive eating, it's called mm -hmm. intuitive right. eating and um, I linked that in there and I will link Tracy in there and just for you guys just to kind of start your own journey on intuitive eating and of course as always comment below any questions you may have and me and Tracy will both be trying to answer those for That's you. That's good, yeah. And until next time, just I hope you guys can find freedom with this video with intuitive eating and I love you guys all. <laughs> Take care. Bye.